aquascape it for my breeding pair of Neolamprologus curiurus. These are the shells that I'm going to use in the aquarium for the curiurus to spawn in. I've been waiting almost 40 minutes for the male to show. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Here we've got a tank that I'm going to be re-aquascaping. This used to house my breeding trio of Neolamprologus brevis sunspot. It actually has some fry in it. I thought I caught all the fry out, but there's actually three fry still in this aquarium. So what we're gonna to do today is get them out, put them on the sump system, clean this tank out completely, re-aquascape it, and then aquascape it for uh, my breeding pair of Neolamprologus curiurus. So they're gonna go in here, and hopefully we'll get some fry out of, them, out of them in the next few months or even weeks. Uh, I think they've got some fry in the shell at the moment. They're in a tank by themselves on the sump system. So that's what I'm gonna to do today, is catch them out, put them in here, re escape this aquarium, make it look really nice for them, and uh, hopefully we'll get some spawning activity soon. Okay, so that's the three brevis caught. Now I'm gonna to have to siphon out most of this water. Uh, I'll probably move out the two bristlemose catfish I've got in here as part of the cleanup crew, and I'll clean up the sand bed. And I'm gonna put in a new sand bed on top of this. And sorry for the sniffling, guys. It's really windy in Sydney today, and uh, my hay fever's playing up. Okay, so let's do this. It's gonna be way easier now with all the fry out of this aquarium to uh, really clean up this sand bed of all the detritus that's on the surface. I'll try not to scoop out too much of this pool filter sand, that's what this is. And I'll be reintroducing some pool filter sand back in, but some clean pool filter sand. I haven't been able to give this sand bed a really good clean in the last few weeks because uh, the Neolamprolagus brevis sunspot fry, they're very small, uh, they're really well camouflaged, and they're very hard to see on the sand bed. So I just live with it. Uh, it doesn't really affect the fry. Uh, it would be nice to have a nice clean sand bed for them, but uh, I'd rather have a little bit of detritus on the sand bed over siphoning out my fry. That's pretty much it really. The rest of this is just pool filter sand with algae growing on it. So what I'll do now is just use one of these clamps. You can get them from your local hardware store or uh, reject shop. Just pop it on to the tank. Keep the siphon hose in position and that should be fine. Continue draining out that tank. Now, I'm actually doing water changes today in the fish room, and uh, that's why I'm able to clean this tank pretty easily today, because I've already started water changes on the sump system. So, I'm gonna continue doing water changes on the other tanks while this is happening, and then we'll come back to this aquarium and start to put the pool filter sand in. Okay guys, the water level is where I want it at. So what I'm gonna do now is just drop in some pool filter sand. Now this pool filter sand has been pre-cleaned. I might add a little bit more because I want it to be a little bit higher than that. I want them to be able to uh, dig around their shells, move the shells around. But uh, I'll continue on with the water changes because I'm trying to keep my eye on everything and not uh, you know, drain a tank completely or not overfill a tank completely. So I'm trying to do like three or four things at once and record a, <laughs> a YouTube video for you guys. So uh, I'm gonna hit pause on this for now and we'll come back to uh, this tank shortly. Okay, so I've added some more pool filter sand to this tank. However, it come from a batch that wasn't really that clean. So a couple cupfuls of that has clouded up the water. I've removed some of that water and now I'm going to replace that water with water from my sump system as well as fresh water change water. The reason why I'm gonna put some water from my sump system is, is because the curiuris are currently on the sump system and uh, that will help kind of acclimate them, uh, not as uh, big of a shock to, this, to their system when they go into this aquarium, uh, if some of that water is in this tank as well. So I'm gonna do that now. What I'm also going to do right now is kind of aquascape it just a little bit. Uh, they don't need too much in terms of uh, aquascaping. Uh, a couple rocks here and there, uh, so the fry have some protection uh, to hide. I might add some uh, cut up PVC pipe as well, and um, a shell or two for the parents to uh, spawn in. 
So these are the shells that I'm going to use in the aquarium for the Couriers to spawn in. Uh, they've already got a large shell, I believe it's a marine type of sna uh, snail shell. These are land-based snails, uh, these shells are from land-based snails, and I believe they're called moon shells. Uh, I'll pop up the correct name on the video here now. Uh, but yeah, they're large enough for the Couriers to spawn in. Um, and yeah, the male can even fit in these even though they're quite large fish themselves. Beautiful looking shells. But because they're not marine shells, they're, they're land-based snail shells. They're lighter, they're lighter than marine-based shells. Uh, so the fish have no trouble moving them around as they see fit. So I have a couple of these shells. And what you need to do is do your best to get the air out. So I just rotate them until all the air comes out. I believe that's enough there. I'm just going to pop them randomly throughout the aquarium. So I might just pop in three of these shells for the guys because they've already got a shell that they spawn in. Uh, but this will give them some options. And you don't want to put too many shells in your breeding aquarium because it'd be even more difficult to catch the fry out. So I pop these shells in around, say, opposite ends of the aquarium. Uh, and now just to break the line of sight up, we've got this nice piece of Sayuri rock. You can't really see it on camera just yet because everything's backlit. Again, try and get all the air bubbles out. A bit hard to do in the shallow water. What I'm going to do is uh, create like a little barrier between the two shells. If the female ever feels threatened from the male, kind of breaks the line of sight up. Now, I've never really seen that happen between this breeding pair. They're very peaceful fish, so I'm not too concerned about there being any aggression. Uh, they sleep in the same shell. They, it's pretty cute to watch. Uh, they're very interesting fish, but uh, I know you can't really see it on camera right now because of the murky water. You'll, get a, you'll see what this tank looks like shortly. Nothing special. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is start to put some water in here now from the sump system and uh, then some fresh water change water. Let it filter a bit with the sponge filters that were in here. And because those sponge filters already are seeded, basically they have been in this aquarium for months. Uh, I can straight off the bat put fish in this tank without restarting a cycle. So if you were to do this from scratch with brand new filters that have never been in an aquarium, You'd want to wait at least six weeks, uh, that's the rule of thumb, until uh, you add fish to the, to the tank, otherwise they could perish. So uh, I can only get away with this because I've got pre-seeded, pre, uh, ba bacteria is already in my sponge filters, so uh, that's why I could get away with putting, doing this tank all in the one day, re-aquascaping in the one day and adding the fish in the tank, they're going to be fine. Anyway, all you're doing is looking at a pretty much a, a boring screen, so <laughs> I'm gonna get cracking uh, and continue on with the water changes and uh, get back to you shortly. Okay guys, water's going in from the sump system. You can see I've got two clamps here holding down this little plastic tray that has some holes in it. Uh, you could buy, uh, I get these when I buy some fruit from a local uh, grocery store um, and I just use them for my water changes because they trickle in the water nice and slowly. It doesn't disrupt the sand bed anywhere near as it would if I was just to have the hose going straight into the aquarium. Uh, so it's less stress on the fish and uh, doesn't, disturb the, does, doesn't disturb the sand bed. Again, apologies for my nasally <laughs> congested uh, sound. The hay, the hay fever's going crazy today. But yeah, I'll just let this fill up a little bit with this water from the sump system. And then I will pop in uh, some fresh water change water in here. And then I'll catch out the Kuriuris breeding pair, pop them in this tank, and they should be fine.
Okay, so we're filling up the Neolamprolagus curiuris aquarium now with fresh water change water. And that is the last tank that I need to fill up for all the water changes to be done in my fish room for this week. So pretty happy about that. All I'll need to do now is fill up the water change reservoirs ready for next week's water change. And that takes actually a little bit longer than uh, draining all the tanks out and filling them up with the water change water. So uh, filling up the water change reservoirs for, the, for, the water, for water changes for next week actually takes longer. You can see I've added a few more rocks uh, into the aquarium. I've also added some PVC pipes uh, that are cut up into smaller sections. Some of them are about three centimeters long, some of them are about six centimeters long. Just, just to have the, give the fry some hidey holes, some hiding spaces uh, in the aquarium. Because Coriurus fry, I've found with my ones, I'm not sure about your ones, but uh, they pretty much tend to, uh, like the brevis, will tend to prey on their younger brothers and sisters. So uh, as uh, one batch of fry matures, and the new batch of fry comes out of the uh, female shell, out of the parent shell, those older fry will pick off and eat the younger fry. So just like Neolamprolagus brevis. So uh, if you're looking to breed these guys, you have to keep moving uh, the older fry out. And that can be challenging at times, especially if you have shells in the tank that the fry can hide in. Sometimes that's a good thing, you know, the fry will go into the shell, you just move one shell from one tank, the shell from one tank into the grow out tank and you're done. But eventually you're gonna have to separate them from those shells. So it's a lot easier just to put some PVC pipes in the tank they kind of uh, give the couriers or any, or any of your shell dwellers really the feeling of shelter that they get from a shell and uh, that suits them right down to a T, that's fine. And it just makes, again, catching them out and separating from them from the shells a whole lot easier. Uh, so uh, once this tank is full, I'll let it settle for a bit, uh, let, let the uh, sponge filters clear up a little bit of this water and then I'll pop the parents into this aquarium and then they'll happily settle down in this tank and uh, we'll see some spawning activity in the coming weeks. I'm pretty sure they've already got fry in the shell, so it shouldn't take too long to see some fry come out of the shell, but we'll see how it goes. So the tank is all set up, it's settled down, the water looks a little bit clearer, it's gonna be fine enough for the fish to go in. So I'm gonna get their shell now, and hopefully the male swims into the shell with the female, and he has. So all I have to do now is grab the shell out of their tank, cover it with the palm of my hand, so they don't swim out while I'm moving it into their tank. So both fish are in this shell. Now, I'm gonna maneuver it so any air that's caught in it can come out. If I was to twist this shell around, like I was doing with the other shells when I put them in this tank, and there's fry in the shell, they will fall out, and I don't wanna do that. So all I'm doing right now is trying to maneuver any air that's caught in this shell up to the front and that should do it doesn't look like any air is caught and I'll just pop this shell into the tank next to this other shell now I'm facing the opening of the shell towards the back of the tank just purely so uh, you know it's when I walk to the fish room they're not going to be as stressed when they see me uh, appear suddenly from in front of the tank now what I'm going to do Let's put the lid back on the other aquarium. Always remember to replace the lids in your aquariums. You can see that's introduced a little bit of uh, detritus into the tank from the tank that that shell was in. And I was right, that shell is a marine snail shell, so it's a little bit heavier than uh, the land-based shells, but that's okay. Uh, these fish are quite large and quite strong, and they're able to move that shell around in the, in the aquarium. But hopefully in the next day or two, they'll come out and I'll be able to film that for you guys. Anyway, so there you go. The breeding pair of Neolamprologus curiuris are in their aquarium. So guys, I've been waiting almost 40 minutes for the male to show. It's come out of the shell. We've been in the tank for about three hours now. And uh, they've just been sitting here, waiting for him to come out of the shell. Kind of came close a few times with his tail poking out, but uh, it's the first time I've gotten him on camera. Completely out of the shell. I'm glad to finally show you guys what he now looks like. It's been a number of months since I've seen him. Uh, I removed the breeding pair out of the tank and left the fry in the, in the tank they were born in. It was just easier to do that. And I really haven't seen uh, the breeding pair since. And uh, I'm really amazed at how much size the male has put on and uh, the color he's got. He's got this yellow dot on his head and the yellow fin. 
and yeah, he's, his tail is just beautiful and uh, nice, nice fork tail and a uh, nice pointy dorsal fin with a white trim on it. Uh, these guys are massive, especially when you compare them to uh, Neolampologus brevis. These guys are double the size of them. They've got a similar appearance, and then these guys obviously grow twice as large and get that forked uh, tail like a bushardi. So much more elegant looking fish. Uh, now his female is in that shell as well. And uh, I don't know if I'll see her today, but there you go, that's what the male looks like. The female's about half his size, uh, so a lot smaller. Um, really glad to finally get a good look at him. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to see how well he's doing. He's kind of stressed out, he's starting to get some barring down his body, his vertical bars, he probably make them out on camera. So that's a sign of stress, so I'm probably gonna stop filming him. But uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel if you're into Lake Tanganyika cichlids. Uh, that's what this, this channel is predominantly about. But uh, I'll wrap this video up now, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.